<laughs> the sheepy dealers. Here I am at the Great Malarkey in Hull. And it's kind of this tented village that is kind of all the way around here. And this is the big malarkey tent over here where Jeremy Strong is currently entertaining children. And in a minute, they're all going to come out in a little crocodile and they're going to come over there to the tent where I am at, next to the BBC. And uh, they're going to tell me some jokes and I'm going to try and turn them into pictures. And it's sort of quiet, although there's lots of, lots of kids here, but they're all from school today, so they're kind of behaving themselves. Come the weekend, it's going to be madness. Come the weekend, it'll be madness. And there is a tent behind me called the Lost Children Tent. And so I'm going to spend the afternoon there on Saturday or Sunday drawing lost children, which I think could be quite funny. Um, and we'll just see how the week plays out. Well, this is my great malarkey sketch, but I need to do kind of some picture on the front there. I haven't decided what to do yet. And uh, just round the corner from where I'm staying is the Spurnhead Light Ship. I put lighthouse, it should be light ship in the Hull Marina. So I just did a little painting of that. Yes. The author's area, um, mission control. This is Josh on his laptop. And these are all the kind of radio sets that all the helpers have going out to all the different tents in the uh, festival. And this is Jeremy Strong. He, he just sat down and then went off. <laughs> he came back and kept talking to other people. It's very hard to draw people who don't sort of keep a pose. And then we had a joke session <laughs> with the year threes. They were kind of seven year olds. And uh, we had a joke call, <laughs> which went, where does a mummy swim in the Dead Sea? And there was another joke about, um, why did the banana go to the doctors? Because he wasn't peeling very well. And why did the ninja go into space to get some ninja stars? <laughs> I've never seen a box full of megaphones, that's crazy. In the afternoon, we had kind of eight, nine-year-olds who had a slightly more sophisticated sense of humour. Um, one little girl told this joke about what happens when you stand behind a cow. You get a great big pat on the back. So we had a good afternoon. <laughs> drawing this much to the teacher's disgust I think but the children loved it they worked so hard they really really did then after the schools went the, the show was kind of open to the public and this uh, pair of stilt walkers came meeting and greeting and I was helping in the sock making tent <laughs> trying to get stories out of these socks so two girls Georgina and Abby uh, their socks were identical twins, but they were separated at birth. But they found each other again on SockMatch.com. Is there a future for that app? This is Alex's dinosaur. He, he said it was a comedian. Finally, we got a joke out of Alex. <laughs> he said, what do you call a bus with no wheels? A slow coach. This is Henry's ninja sock. This is Elizabeth's sock of sparkliness. It was covered in sparkles. She goes through the world spreading sparkliness. This is Amy's sad Brexit sock. So disappointed with the decision of the British public. Claire's Ariel, who's an independent mer sock. She's just rocking it by herself. Matt Silly Bob, who's a, just a grumpy caterpillar. And Yusen, a sock called Rekazar, who wants to be a Pokemon. And this is Robin's Mary, which is based on her cat who likes to sit on her face and lick her ears. Afterwards, the children could go to the Sock Puppet Theatre and put on a performance, and I think some of them did. Well, thanks for watching, and I'm going to be here all this week, so I should imagine I'll be doing more videos. This is the Spurn Lightship.